What's up, Kyle Gang? So welcome back to this mechanics problem. So what do we have here? Well, we have this diameter, uh, this bolt, right? That pulls on the system here. And we have this P pulling this way. Now we're given this uh, shear stress and shear strain diagram. And our goal is to find the permanent shear strain on the bolt here, right? So we're gonna pull, and that bolt is kinda gonna get crooked, right? Because it's pulling at a weird angle. So our goal is to find what happens when we apply that 150 kilonewton load here. So for that, we're gonna need our G, which is our modulus of rigidity. Uh, so let's calculate that. So modulus of rigidity, right? If you look at your shear strain diagram, or stress strain diagram, right? It's the slope of this line here in the elastic phase. So in this line here, you know, if you let go, it's gonna go back to normal. So we gotta basically find the slope of that. So that's gonna be easy, right? We're at KSI, so it's gonna be 50, 10 to the three, uh, how did I do it? Maybe I don't need to do 10 to the 3. Let's not do 10 to the 3. So it's just going to be 50 over that 0 0.005. And we're going to find that G is equal to 10,000 KSI. So that's a good number right there. So what do we need to find next, right? Well, we need to find if we're in that elastic phase or if we're not. Because the permanent shear strain is only going to happen if we pass this phase here. So basically, if our shear stress passes 50, if we're anywhere in this range, when we let go, we're not gonna go all the way back to zero on our uh, strain. We're gonna go back to somewhere greater than zero, and that's where the shear stress comes in. So we need to find out if our shear stress is greater than 50. So the equation for shear stress, right, is force over area. Uh, but not so get confused about P. So what's the force being applied to this bolt, right? If we're looking at the bolt, it's kind of a straight line here, and we have a force pulling this way, and two forces pulling that way. So at any point, if you take a cut, our shear stress is just gonna be P divided by two. So one half P, right? So you can do the cut on that if you want, um, but I'm just trying to, for the sake of time, let's move past that. So let's put in our numbers. So we have one half, we know P is 150, and our area is 1.25 inches in diameter, so 1.25. So you do that, you get that our shear stress is equal to 61.1 KSI. Now what does that mean, right? Well, if we look at our graph here, we know the elastic region happens in 50, or it ends in 50, so we're gonna be past that. We're gonna be somewhere in this region. So this is 61.1. Now what we need to find is what this is here. Right, in a two. Because when we let go of our stress here, what's gonna happen is our stress is gonna go back to zero. So when we let go of that force being applied, we're gonna go down with the same slope of G, right? Whatever this slope is G, this slope is also G. So our goal is to find what point on the x-axis our strain goes back to, right? This is our goal, because this is gonna be our permanent strain is this number here. So we need to find what happens when we go down here, and to do that, we should probably find this point first. So we wanna find what the strain is when our stress is equal to 61.1. So our equation for that, uh, we can use a lot of ways to find this. I think the most easy way is to use slope. So we're looking at the slope of the second line, the one that's more flat. We know that the slope is rise over run, so it's gonna be 75 minus 50 over 0, 0 0.05 minus 0 0.005. But that's not all the slope's equal to. We can do the same thing, but for the shorter slope. So let's take 61.1 minus 50 over now our x value for this is that gamma two that we're solving for. So gamma two minus 0 0.005. So you can see how this slope is gonna be equal to this slope. And if we just ignore that, then we know we can just solve for this one unknown. So uh, I'm gonna skip the steps on this. Actually, no, no, I'm gonna write this. This is gonna be 0 0.0018 is equal to, so I'm taking the inverse of this to get the gamma on the top. 0 0.091901 gamma 2 minus 4.5045 times the negative 4. So you're left with this equation, then you can really easily solve for that strain, shear strain. So if you do this, you get that that shear strain at 2 is equal to 0 0.020 or 250 radians. That's not our answer yet. That tells us that this point here, 0 0.0250.
So now we need to find what this point here is. This is the point we're finding, and that's going to be our permanent elongation. It's this one here. So, but yeah, whatever. So that's what we're solving for there, it's that distance. So now we're going to take a blast to the past. We're going to go back to seventh grade, and we're going to use that point slope formula that you thought you'd never use again. All right, so what is point slope formula? y2 minus y1 is equal to m x2 minus x1. OK, so let's plug in what we know, right? So y2 is going to be this point. So this is point 2, and this is point 1. We're solving for the x value of point 1. So y2 is going to be that height of 2, so 61.1, 60, minus y1 is going to be 0, right? So then the slope is going to be a g that we found earlier, because we're going down with the slope of g, which we found to be the slope of that line. That's going to be 1,000 or 10,000. X2 is going to be that value we just solved for, so 0 0.0250 minus X1, which is what we're solving for. So we can just label that a strain in 1. So now if you solve this equation, right, you get the strain in 1 is equal to 0 0.01884 radians. And that's our final answer. So that's going to be kind of the crook, right, the bend of our uh, bolt after the stress is let go. So yeah, that's how you solve this kind of problem. Not too tricky. Just about making sure uh, you know how to analyze that stress strain diagram and then solve the math. So yeah, uh, feel free to check out the rest of my videos. I got more problems like this in my playlist if you're having troubles. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.